Welcome to the introduction to discrete structures for computing. I want to go over the syllabus with you, a little bit about what this course is all about, and get you started. Um, the course is going to move quickly because we only have seven or eight weeks this summer before we uh, finish out the uh, semester. And I want to make sure that you are up to date with everything you need to do and you get started quickly. So let's first of all go over the syllabus. Um, I'm, uh, I'm counting on all of you being familiar with D2L and how to use the uh, online product, but once you get into the course, this is what you're going to see. What we're going to go over right now is what's called the overview. So you click on the overview and you'll be able to see the syllabus for the course. So let's talk a little bit about the syllabus. First of all, this course um, is analogous to the discrete mathematics course which many of you uh, were formally required to take. This course substitutes for that for the School of Computing and the degrees in the School of Computing. It is not a complete substitute for that course. For instance, uh, other mathematics courses which require discrete mathematics as a prerequisite will not accept this course for those. But if you are Go working towards a degree in the School of Computing, this is probably a better course for you to take because we're going to emphasize the use of discrete mathematics in the areas of computing. So that is the difference in the two courses. Uh, the course learning outcomes, we want you to understand what discrete structures are. By the way, discrete means individually or uh, things that can be counted versus the real number system, which is consid considered a continuous uh, number system. Discrete things are things you can count. And so that means that we're going to look at logic. We're going to look at set theory. Uh, we're going to look at combinatorics. We're going to look at ways to uh, measure performance of programs. Um, these are all things that are discrete. The uh, textbook, instead of using a textbook and having you all go out and purchase a textbook, we've decided to try to be more economical than that and use materials that are readily available on the internet. So you will see which, with each assignment suggested readings and videos that are available to you. As much as possible, I'm going to try to, throughout the summer, augment several of our subjects with videos. I can't promise you I'll have a video for every module, but that is my goal to eventually get there. So you will see videos show up during the course, and I will try to let you know that a new video is available. The videos that I do, uh, I will try to make more succinct to the actual things that you need to know for this course and for the School of Computing. Um, the timetable for the course. Since we don't have a lot of time, please be very careful of your use of time so that you don't get behind. We have a lot of things to cover, and um, we do have a schedule down here which I will show you. Um, starting today, which uh, when you watch this, it should be May 23rd. This is the introduction to the course, but you need to get started right away. On, uh, on, on the first module on uh, propositional and predicate logic. Uh, we'll be talking about that next Friday in class and for those of you online you need to be working through that in this uh, week time frame and try to get that done pretty much by June 6th. You'll notice that our final exam is July 25th down here at the bottom so we have a lot to do in a short period of time. May 30th, test one is opening up. Well, that's going to be an online test that you do at home. You'll have a three-day period to do that test, but it is a time test with 180 minutes to do it. So what you want to do is make sure that you understand propositional predicate logic. There are quizzes there for your own use. So use the quizzes to make sure you understand the material, and then take test one on or about May 30th. Then we'll get into complexity analysis. That's where you begin to look at your programs 
and by looking at uh, things like loops within your programs, um, looking at the complexity of your statements and, and assignments, you can begin to get an idea, and it's a ballpark idea, of uh, the timing on your particular program. And we're going to have a project during the course where we're actually going to use complexity analysis to take a look at a couple of sort routines. So I want you to do that project. I'll talk about that a little bit later on the importance of that project, but you want to make sure that it's very thorough, that you have thought it through. I don't want to see something that just says, I did this and here are my results. I want you to analyze those results and to come back with this sort routine gave this results and I believe it's because of whatever and so forth for the other one. And then I want you to analyze for the size of the database, the data sets you're using, which sort routine is the better sort routine. Okay? And it may vary by size of data set. Just a big hint there. Um, we'll get into sets, relations, and functions. We're going to look at relations and functions differently in the way you're going to look at them than in the way we did it in mathematics. Now, I'm a math instructor, so I understand both, but I've spent 20-some years in the computing industry. So I will try to relate both of them back and forth to you. Um, we get into matrices, and then we go into graphs and trees, uh, and then combinatorics will be our final uh, section before the final exam. You notice that you'll have another test on June 20th. We're moving quickly. June 30th, your term project is actually due. So don't put off working on the term project. Okay. Um, there's also a course log due. What we want you to do is, for each module, take some notes about what you've learned in that module and keep a log of that and keep it in such a way that you can send it to me electronically. So I want to see that log at the end of the course. So let's talk about how these things count as far as your grade is concerned. The three tests, including the final, so you'll notice there was test one, test two, and then the final. So those three tests are going to be worth 20% each, so 60% of your grade is going to be in the tests. Um, the class project will be 35%. So again, don't make that a paragraph when you send it to me. I would like to see two or three pages of analysis of what you actually saw and what you think the results should have been versus what they were. That may be different. How well you explain that is what I'm looking for, not how accurate your test turned out. Uh, the course log, these are those notes for each module. Uh, that'll count 5% of your grade. So when you add all that up, that's 100% of your grade. Okay? So quizzes, for instance, are not in your grade. Those are like homework. Make sure you're doing those. You also have some homework assignments that are in here as well. Doing those are going to determine how well you do on the tests and, and on the final as well as on the project. Uh, there are some suggested readings. You'll notice the uh, what we call the textbook is actually things that are available for free on the internet and these are the ones that most of the readings uh, that you'll be assigned are coming from. I also use those to develop the lectures that I do in class and again some of the videos that I will try to get done for those of you that are doing this online uh, will come out of that as, uh, later on in the uh, course. I think you understand academic concept, conduct. I'll make sure that you do that. Um, again, the course expectations, everything is in D2L. And uh, we will try to make accommodations if they are needed. Please let me know if you have a need. So that's basically the overview of the course. Get started now quickly as you can uh, with... Uh, uh, propositional logic. You want to learn about truth tables. You want to learn the difference between an AND statement, an OR statement, and an implication statement. Those are the three that are important. Make sure you understand those. 
When you get into predicate logic, that is a whole different step. It's kind of an advanced version of, of logic. And that's where we're going to look at things like uh, looking at whole sets of things versus an assigned particular set or a particular entity and how we can write symbolically a sentence so that it is logically correct. And uh, we'll talk about that more uh, next week and uh, if I can I'll come up with a video for that. But again the videos on the internet are very good. So watch those videos, make sure you know what uh, what we're talking about in those subjects, and that is your assignment uh, for the uh, beginning of the course. So get started, there's no time to waste, and let me know by email or through the drop boxes what your feelings are and what your concerns are, and I will try to handle them for you.